educated, smart, successful, resilient. What comes to mind when you hear these words? Do you picture a particular person? Educated, smart, and successful often call to mind honors courts, scholarships, and perhaps the image of a bookish nerd with a 4.0 GPA. Resilience typically conjures images of street smarts and a defying the odds type of persistence. Why don't the two go together? Why is resilience reserved for those who aren't smart enough to succeed the first time? In education, which is more important, the outcome or the process? Do we really learn anything of value without challenge? As an undergraduate student, I was struck by Yeats's words, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. And they have guided my work as an educator for 20 years. It seems to me that high school students are increasingly walking into the world with a small pail filled by others. And we call that an education. I'd like to introduce you to a student of mine, Mary. When I met Mary, she was in the sixth grade and I was her guidance counselor. She had a spark to her that made me shake my head and grin. By mid-year, she was in my office quite frequently. And despite the best efforts of everyone around her, she barely passed the sixth grade or the seventh. Eighth was a stretch too. During class, she was more likely to be found in the bathroom painting her face with whiteout than completing an assignment. <laughs> By her eighth grade year, I had become Mary's tutor. Her required science fair project that year qualified her for the district competition. Rather than being excited, Mary was quite disappointed that the work was going to continue. She was also fairly surprised to find out that all of the conclusions she'd written were wrong because when her teacher helped her calculate the data, several rows had been left out. She grudgingly did everything I asked her to do to rework that project. But Mary obviously didn't seem to understand why the missing data changed anything. How does a bright, creative eighth grader not even realize that the conclusions she's written don't match what she observed? Well, thus far, Mary's school experience had not equipped her to think independently. She had no connection to the learning whatsoever. Her pail was being filled by everyone else. Let's think about Yeats's pail versus fire analogy. Building a fire requires several key elements. Kindling, tinder, a spark, fuel, and oxygen. The ability to think independently provides the same reaction and learning as kindling would for a fire. But how do we cultivate thinking? Ask questions. Well, what questions? Do we pose deep philosophical questions such as, why can parrots talk, but not monkeys? No, kids ask those questions quite naturally. The key is actually in responding to their questions with questions such as, well, what do you think? Where could we find that answer? What did you do the last time you faced this situation? Questions such as these will lead children to their own conclusions and create the confidence for facing unknowns and difficulties independently in the future. Over time, when you ask them if they've read the instructions, you will hear responses such as, well, actually, yes, I just don't understand step four. And they will begin to ask genuine questions rather than cry out the generic, I need help. Remember Mary, well, last we heard, she was bewildered by her science fair project, painting her face with whiteout, drawing on her shoes, 
or doing just about anything other than learning during school. So her mom chose homeschool over public school or private school options for the ninth grade. Mary wasn't happy. She desperately wanted a chance to attend public school. So a deal was struck that if she could prove herself capable, she would earn the right to try public school the following year. Virtual classes were a disaster for Mary. She was unable, unwilling, or both to follow multi-step instructions for completing assignments. So she switched to textbooks instead. At first, there was a lot of staring into space. And when asked why she wasn't working, she would say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But when her shoulder shrugs were met with questions or shoulder shrugs from her tutors, she would eventually find the instructions and get to work. Lo and behold, when left to read, answer questions, and write essays at her own pace and with the freedom to dictate her own schedule, Mary proved herself quite capable of learning and completing tasks independently. Thus, she earned the right to try public school in the 10th grade. Have you ever watched as a fire was lit, only to burn briefly and then fizzle out before the larger wood could catch the heat? Tinder, not the app young people love, but medium-sized burning material is required for a fire to burn. The ability to navigate failure provides the same reaction in education as Tinder does for a fire. Have you ever felt a task to be an absolutely daunting mountain to climb? Only to be further discouraged when someone comes along and says, come on, it's not that hard. Hard and easy are relative to the individual. Telling a student something they view as hard is easy generally serves only to squash any amount of self-confidence that they may have. When students figure out their own way of accomplishing a task, they probably won't do it the way you would do it. They may not succeed the first time, or the second, or the third. <laughs> that just means that they're learning something each time, even if it's hard. Edison said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Aren't we glad that he didn't quit after the first unsuccessful attempt at an electric light bulb? In our achievement-driven society, many fear that a failed test, a low grade on a report card, or being cut from a sports team will permanently alter a child's future by preventing them from being accepted into a particular college or receiving a scholarship. While grades and sports performance do impact college applications, the inability to do things such as accept criticism, face failure with grace, and independently complete tasks is much more likely to close the doors of opportunity than any low grade or test score. Remember Mary? In public school, she defaulted to the let others fill my pail approach. And in short, she failed. So she returned to, pub, to homeschool and began to truly find her own way of learning and discerning. She even began to sing the praises of non-traditional schooling. She found a way to bring together I don't have to do what everyone else is doing. And there are some things that must be done. She found a way to have a sense of self in her learning. The spark of a fire that won't go out is a sense of self and personal investment. Now, Mary is a stakeholder in her own success, instead of depending solely on the choices of others. Have you ever started a new job, and had no idea where to find the most basic information that everyone took for granted? In your career, has every project gone as you planned? Young people are increasingly unprepared for these types of challenges, and it's a contributing factor to what we know as the boomerang generation. 
the homeschool group that I direct has two mantras. Hard and impossible are not the same. And you can do hard things. Acknowledging that a task may be difficult or that a child may not know what to do in the moment creates confidence rather than diminishing it. And it provides the fuel for the fire to continue burning. Persistence. We've heard so far that Mary has kindling of independent thinking, tinder of navigating failure, a spark, a sense of self. But what about keeping the fire going? What about sustaining that? The fuel for a fire that won't go out is persistence. Persistence is often difficult to define. In simple terms, it's not giving up when things are difficult. But it also includes the idea of trying new approaches when what you're doing isn't working. If persistence is the fuel for the fire, creativity is the oxygen. One cannot exist without the other. Think of the people you admire, community leaders, business leaders, even movie heroes. Typically, these figures are both doggedly determined and original thinkers. They are persistent and creative. My personality, on the other hand, has always tended towards perfectionism. There's one right way and one right answer. Well, when you work with kids long enough, you find out none of that is really true. When I sit back and allow them to be creative, to let them fail a little bit and encourage them to persist, I see them succeed. Most of the time, it's not the way I would do it. Usually, it's better. I'm privileged to watch the same children grow over multiple years. Most teachers see them for a year and they move on. I've gained a unique perspective of what helps them as they grow intellectually and emotionally. Information is often forgotten, but skills transcend age and content and the willingness to try in the face of frustration seems to be the most vital quality for them to gain. Let's bring this back to Mary. She's persistent, she's creative, she can think independently, but school hasn't been the only challenge Mary has faced. She lost her father to cancer Depression has been a factor for her. She even experimented with cutting as a coping mechanism in the sixth grade. Changing Mary's experience as a student also allowed her to gain the necessary skills for better navigating her life as a whole. Mary still does not love school. It's just not who she is. But now she laughs. She makes amazingly witty jokes, and she asks questions no one else ever would. She wears pajamas to class and spends her recess time sleeping in the sunshine. And unlike her teacher, she usually keeps her shoes on. <laughs> Despite the fact that she'd rather be on Instagram, Mary's work is usually done on time or even ahead of deadlines. This year, she even chose to step up her academic game, to complete high school a full year early and be able to enter the workforce. Mary has an intellectual fire all of her own, rather than a small pail filled by others. It could be that if we change our focus from good grades to good thinking, our children will develop in healthier ways. It could be that if we allow them to fail they will better understand the connection between their choices and the outcomes. It could also be that if we allow them to be frustrated, 
they will learn that they are capable of overcoming challenges. Chances are we all know a student like Mary, or two, or five, who will benefit from independent thinking, persistence, and creativity. So let's ignite fires rather than filling pails. Ask questions. Let them fail. Encourage persistence and leave some room for creativity. Thank you.